All right, sorry this is part three, okay? I'm an idiot. And I'm gonna openly admit that because remember I said the truck's making no power. I think it's because of the fuel that I used. It had nothing to do with it, and I'm just an idiot. And I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you guys why right now. You guys see down in there my pre-boost screw? Look where I accidentally put it. I didn't put it in the right hole. I know what you guys are thinking. How does a guy with three kids not put it in the right hole, right? Somehow I managed that. It was dark, I couldn't see, and um, for two days I went through, I drained an entire thing of fuel in here, and I'm like, the truck is making absolutely dog shit power and has a ton of steam coming out of here. So I'm like, it's gotta be the water and the fuel, right? Everything that I learned and did was wrong. And that might actually be usable fuel even though there's water in it, I might be able to still use it little bits at a time, but that's what it was. I looked at my pre-boost because I was about to adjust the star wheel and I'm like, it's, what the hell? And yeah, that makes 100%. I'm an idiot, so I'm gonna take my 10 mil, I'm gonna put the, it back to where it was. We all make mistakes. The thing is, if I would have done this on a customer truck, which actually that would have never happened on a customer truck because I'm working in a lighted shop. I did this in a hurry at night while it was dark out, we had almost no light, and uh, yeah, that was a whoopsie, but Goes to show you, I care more about customer vehicles than my own All right, well, let's see how she starts now that we put it in correctly. That's way better. Well. Cheers to being an idiot sometimes. Sometimes I make mistakes. It happens. Now, I can take this out and drive it, but we have some fuel here. This is full, a little bit of water in it. We have that barrel there. And then we have this barrel here with diesel in it. Diesel, transmission fluid. Now that's, that was 50 gallons of straight red diesel. So that explains. I'm gonna do an oil change on this pig though because uh, I'm wondering I wonder how much water is actually in the fuel, in the oil, because of like the steam that's coming out of it. I wonder if it's because there's moisture in there, but it could have also been because that screw being out introduces a big vacuum leak, or boost leak, whatever, and that is getting into the crankcase, so I don't know. All right, so we got this tank full. I need to go grab a new filter, because this one's clogged up. And then small tank is full as I'm gonna get it. And then these two barrels are empty, so I took everything out of that. That is 35 plus 53, so just about 85 gallons, so we're good. Good for a while on diesel. I'm gonna go spray off the truck with some spray nine and get it all like degreased and shit. But yeah, so basically what, with a 12 valve, you have a pre-boost screw, and it's a hole that's open. The screw goes in, pushes on the fuel plate, and or the AFC housing where the little diaphragm's at, and it controls the fueling under 10 PSI. Once it hits 10 PSI, that pressure pushes on it. Well, what happened was I didn't put it in the right hole and it, any pressure comes out the back of the housing instead of pushing on the diaphragm. Therefore, no boost is made over 10 PSI. That's why I wasn't building boost. So now we take it and we test drive it. It sounds so much stronger now. And I did put a little bit of oil in it. It's a nice cold day today. I'm gonna get these things dropped off in here. Finally went and got a strap for all that shit there. Um, I'm gonna go and spray everything off a little bit later because we got like fuel and shit down the side of the truck right here and all this. So I wanna get that cleaned off. Let's see how much pressure's in here. Oh wow, none. For some reason there's been pressure in there lately. But yeah, I'm gonna get that sprayed off and go from there. But. If you guys have any good clean waste oil to give me, I'm gonna use what's in that barrel, finding out that that actually wasn't the problem. I'm gonna start using it slowly, so I'll probably do like five gallons at a time. I'll just use that to thin out what I'm running. So these two, I'm gonna throw in the truck, and then that I'll probably throw in the truck. All right, so that stuff's dropped off. We're gonna go to Napa now and try to go buy some filters, and then, then we'll go to clean everything off. So I'm gonna try to change that filter out, and then, clean it all off because I know when I change the filter it's gonna make a hell of a mess. All right so yesterday I bought the wrong filter for the uh, pump back there 
So I'm going to have to go at some point wash this thing, but I, I think I'm going to do that later in the day because I know I'm going to get wet and I really don't feel like it. But I'm going to go get the correct filter now and see if we can get the pump to start working again. I think it was building pressure, but I think the filters are clogged. So the 10 PSI or 10 micron is kind of an issue. There's a cop sitting right there. 10 micron might be an issue. Um, I'm going to try to find something, you know, like they had other ones there that weren't as low a micron. Apparently those filters that I'm running on the pump truck are also 10 micron, which is uh, pretty bad. So I'm going to try to swap them out and find like a higher rating or something, but we'll see going down the road. Um, but let's get that taken care of first and then get our aux pump working and then we'll go from there. All right, like I was saying, you got an oil filter this time, so we'll see how long this guy lasts and then uh, we'll get this bed cleaned out because it's pretty terrible. Well, it's not perfect, but we got it a lot cleaner. So whole truck is, we got the engine bay a lot. This is the side you guys will want to see because it's the side on the sun. So I think I did a pretty decent job. Obviously like the normal paint spots will get touched up and shit later on, but it's coming together nice and clean. It looks a lot better than it used to. Need some bigger tires on this thing though. I can't wait till these things are out and I can go get the bigger ones, but we got decisions on that. So we'll see. We're gonna go over to my dad's now. We're gonna see what we can get into over at the shop. We're just waiting on customers and stuff. I do have stuff lined up. We're just waiting on everything to kind of match through. I don't know what the hell that is, but I didn't wash the hood. That was about it. So hood and grill I didn't touch or the rear bumper, but it's a good idea. I'm going to run the oil filter on here. We're going to see how they do. And if it does better, I'm going to start running oil filters instead of fuel filters, a water separator and an oil filter because they last longer. And I think that one's a 24 micron as opposed to a 10, which a 10 is absolutely terrible for oil. Um, so we're slowly learning it. But this entire tank of diesel I got, or well, everything, I have probably about 200 gallons now and I've only paid $180. So for me to pay a little bit of money to figure out what fuel filters and oil filters work and what don't, I'm okay with that sacrifice knowing that down the road once I get it figured out, then we're all good. So let's get over there and see what we can get into. Y'all wonder where I get my sketchy from. <laughs> oh boy. There you go, that's going right to junk. There you go. That'll get that to go down the driveway. Goodness. What? See how clean that all is now? It's kind of nice. I'm tired of getting this thing dirty. Clean filters and all that. Now I did get the question about the, uh, the waste oil. Is it worth running and whatnot? Because I posted yesterday's video and we knew uh, and had no idea what it was. So for the guys wondering, is running waste oil worth it? And I'm going to tell you 100% it is. Once you figure out a system, because I've been running it forever, and I never had issues with waste oil until the day that I decided to start adding filters through it. Once I started adding filters, that's when waste oil became a problem. So I'm trying to figure out what filters work, what screens work, this and that. So figuring that out all works. Um, I didn't have any problems with uh, the water that was in there and it turned out it was only like a little bit because the diesel mixing with it kind of like made it a little bit more watery than it was. But it turns out that it was just the pre-boost adjustment screw. I put it in the wrong hole and it's not a big deal. So for $1.75 a gallon, I can go and get waste oil and fill my tank. But I have like, oh, I'd like to say I have another 75 gallons chilling in the shop and then I have a full tank of fuel um I probably have 125, 130 gallons in the truck right now. So I'm basically able to drive the truck around for free other than maintenance. So that's awesome. So yes, in, in these times, yes, it, it is definitely worth it. Um, back when fuel was like 285 a gallon, it, there was minimal, like, you know, you could do it, but there was minimal gains. Now that fuel is as pricey as it is, yeah, absolutely, you're saving a shitload. Like, even me buying filters and whatnot. I just need to figure out what filters work. I'm gonna start running one oil filter down on the frame rail and one oil filter up top and then just a water separator down below and then everything's working good. So, truck is running phenomenally. Super happy with that. Yes, that, that should narrow down the question. Yes, running waste oil is worth it if you uh, get the correct system and make it work. So I ordered an oil pan for my truck. 
And this is what they ended up sending me. This is a uh, water p or a um, thermostat housing, I guess, for a Chrysler Sebring. Like, how do you mix that up? So, typical eBay purchase. I found brand new oil pan and shit. They sent out this. I'm like, I'd love to do the oil pan because there's a leak on the oil drain that I did and I want to redo it. And that's what they sent me. So, it's a company from eBay. And they won't even answer. Like, I sent them an email uh, last Friday. It's now Thursday and still nothing. eBay says they'll step in on Saturday if uh, I don't get my stuff. So I'm gonna get my money back. That's a $25 part. I spent a little over, probably in the hundreds on uh, an oil pan. So I need my oil pan. Well, it turns out they actually responded to my request on yesterday, it looks like Wednesday, because I reported that I didn't receive my item. So they're gonna send that out and uh, actually send me a return label. So good on them, appreciate them. So I'm not gonna put their name out there, but they did respond to it, which is awesome. So appreciate them for that so we should be getting an oil pan here soon and then I'll return their their part so we're just working on right now getting this stuff this is all going to go in the scrap pile uh, we have a car that's going today you guys saw so I'm gonna throw all this in the scrap pile and then we're gonna be replacing my AC lines and everything AC wise because this is all good stuff that doesn't leak and we're gonna get this stuff on and we'll have AC in this thing coming this week and then at some point, I would like to swap out, uh, rebuild the other HVAC system I have, and then we're gonna swap from dual to single. So just all stuff that I like to work on and tinker. And um, yeah, ultimately just something to do and keep myself busy, keep making content. We're getting this thing organized and whatnot. So if you guys have any waste oil you'd like to give me that's actually clean, let me know. I got about 75 gallons right now on top of what's in the truck, so it's like 100, 200 gallons of shit. So. Working on slowly moving this up. Why does nobody want this transfer case? Seriously, getting rid of this transfer case has been a pain in the ass. I need it gone. I spent 500 bucks on it, only to never have to use it because I converted the two-wheel drive. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm also going to throw away these valve covers because I'm never going to need these again. So might as well scrap stuff. Also, the mirrors are ready to go. 150 bucks. Anybody wants them. I just need them gone as well. So. All right, we're doing a quick scrap run, trying to get rid of a lot of the stuff for the guy. Fortunately, still waiting on this guy with the bed. I don't know what, what his deal is. So I'm gonna get all this stuff. We have a scrap car, like I said, we're gonna put it all in. So I'm gonna go back there and uh, know that we're not using any money in fuel because, well, we're not using any money in fuel because it's all free, it's all waste oil. So. All right guys, so it's pretty much the end of the video. Um, not much going on today, not much going on. I'm just waiting on a bunch of customers to uh, come through on a bunch of things. I wanted to talk to you guys because we're going to be making some huge updates uh, this coming forward. I was supposed to go pick up a trailer last week. Probably people were like, oh, where's that trailer at? So we should be picking one up in about a week or two from the same person. Uh, hopefully a 40-foot triple axle load trail. Um, yes, I didn't want a triple axle, but it was the only option I had for the lease-to-own deal that I wanted to do. About 300 bucks a week, $1,200 a month. So that's the plan. Everything going good. Obviously, I'm going to keep doing YouTube. We're going to keep going on with that. Still doing mechanic stuff, just waiting, like I said, on customers to drop stuff off and uh, go pick stuff up, not a big deal. And on the transport side, we're waiting on trailers. So those are the three things that we got going. We are moving to freight. We are still gonna be able to do a little bit of cars, but m the majority is going to be freight, home every day, still doing what I'm doing. So financially, my portfolio has never looked better than it has now, and my truck has also never run better than it has at this very time as well. So, like I saw, you guys saw two topics here. Truck running on 100% waste oil. The issue turned out to be that fuel plate or that preview screw. So, once that's all taken care of, we're good. Everything's running good. Only issues we had were filters. So, now that filters are all situated, we are good. We're good to run 100%. And something people need to realize is that every truck is a money pit. Every vehicle in general is a money pit when you're an automotive enthusiast. You just need to learn how to make money off of your expensive hobby. Let's put it that way. So I could go out and buy a brand new 2022, same deal, it's gonna happen. I could go out and buy a car, same deal, it's gonna happen. Every car I've ever had, I put thousands of dollars into just because I could, not because it needed it. This truck does not need half the work that I do to it. I'm just, when it comes to certain things, I'm slowly working on perfecting everything and perfectionist, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, we're getting there slowly, it is what it is, it's happening, it's just something that I enjoy doing. Um, the YouTube ultimately pays for it, pays the bills at home, 
So as I was saying, so now that we've got the truck side covered, we're talking about the financial side now. Like I said, financially never looked better. Um, I started out with almost zero in February when I made my $12,000 payment, started out, and now we are starting fresh. Within two months, have been able to build up just about $20,000 in capital from zero, which is awesome. Now, every bit of that trailer, when I sold the trailer for ten five, I spent every dime. The day the check cleared, I spent every dime. I made a couple investments, I paid off a couple of things, got caught up on other things, and still was able to raise about $20,000 in capital, and that was only in two months. So, when you guys don't see, hey, you know, are you making money, are you still working? I'm still working every day, whether I work on the truck or I just do YouTube, it's still all money, it still puts the money in my pocket. The reason I like the waste oil is because I'm not, I refuse to pay $585, $575 for diesel fill my truck up for $800 and ultimately when I can just fill it up for a couple of filters and free fuel, like it's not all that big of a deal. So with that being said, now that we have that much in capital, I told you guys next month I am finally going and getting my authority, getting the LA's LLC. Uh, well, we have a company that's going to be able to do all that for me. So I'm going to be ultimately paying them. So they're going to tell me what steps I need to take, what I can do to make it as legal as possible. DOT number, MC number, insurance, all of that stuff. Everything is squared away. We just need to get it all set up next month. So that is ultimately going to be happening. And then along with the shop work, along with YouTube, we're going to try to see what else I can do to keep capital high while I'm investing because I'm going to be throwing a lot of money at this just to make sure that everything's done right. I'm pretty much going to be paying certain people to do specific things to keep the business 100%, keep it legal. Anytime we get an audit, they take care of that. Anytime we get a letter or anything that needs to be looked at, we figure out if it's a scam, if it's legit, stuff like that. Pay somebody else to do it. So that is the cap, the key there. So other than that, everything's going good. Um, just a little bit of patience, just doing daily uploads and whatnot. I do have a second crypto channel, which I will probably get into at some point. By the end of the year, I am trying to have at least 50000 in capital just set aside in either crypto and in my bank account. I don't like to keep more than like five or 10 grand in the bank account at a time anyway. So I keep like 90% of my portfolio at time. Like there are times where it'll hit 90%. Generally, right now, I think we're sitting, I think about 65% of my portfolio is in cryptocurrencies into investments that I think are going to do well in the future. Um, people are going to think you're crazy for that, but the US dollar is obviously failing and it doesn't look like it's any better anytime soon. So it's risky to keep your money in the bank. It's risky to do anything. Invest in what you think is going to do well. I think that between crypto and this business, I think everything's going to go well. And I do ultimately think that we're going to see some good results. But that's just how investments work. Everything is sketchy and everything is a risk. So you just got to gotta figure out what you want to do. So that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, you guys have any concerns, questions, feel free to let them down in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next video. Go check out my Amazon stuff down below. Go check out the 12-hour uh, swap checklist. See you guys in the next video. Later.